President Biden honing in on former President Trump taking a swipe during a speech in North Carolina yesterday. Watch. My predecessors like to say America is a failing nation. In my face, bless me, Father, for his sin. I mean, come on. <laughs> a failing nation. And by the way, did you hear he wants to see the stock market crash? Because he does not want it now. We're doing well. He wants to see the stock market crash. You know why? He doesn't want to be the next Herbert Hoover. As I told him, he's already Hoover. But you can count on Trump to land a roundhouse. Look, he can't put two sentences together. He can't find the stairs off a stage, which there are a lot of them up there. Believe me, they're all over the place. He can't find his way off a stage when he makes a very short speech, and it has to be short because it can't be long. He can't negotiate. But it's not just Trump who's calling out Biden's fumbles. Andrew Yang took a shot while endorsing Democratic presidential challenger and Congressman Dean Phillips. A lot of Americans have made up their minds about this president and this economy, and telling them that it's better is not a working strategy. The second thing is that the president is 81 years old. It's going to be tough to reinvent grandpa. He's not going to become a new candidate. The old grandpa line came the same day as this moment. I also want to mention Congressman De Deborah Ross. Where's Deborah? This year, I just had my picture taken with her. That's probably why she left. <laughs> no, all kidding aside. But anyway, you, you can, oh, she couldn't be here, actually. That's not true. I got it mixed up. Oh, Chris. And I have to admit, you know, I saw there were subtitles on what the president was saying recently this week put on a video. That's, that's undeniable. It is undeniable. And, it, and, you know, I actually don't have a problem uh, with an older candidate. It doesn't bother me one bit. Uh, what I want is a candidate who projects strength to the country. That, to me, is what is most important, because with age comes wisdom, and we need wisdom, and we need experience. Because if you look in the past and, and you look at, you know, uh, what Benjamin Franklin said when he, would ask, when he was asked if we have a republic or a monarchy, and he said, it's a republic, if you can keep it. You go to Theodore Roosevelt, who said you need to speak softly, but carry a big stick. And that is the essence of, of our nation. And we need a leader who projects strength and surrounds him or herself with capable people who can, who can implement the modern uh, tools needed to succeed in this geopolitical climate. Uh, so to me, it's about age is great for wisdom, but we need a projection of strength. And we don't have that as a country now. We have a projection of weakness, and that makes us vulnerable. All right, now translate that, Kaylee, to the campaign of the current President Biden. Talk to us about New Hampshire. Yeah, so Nikki Haley was actually asked about the Biden age last night and gave a very similar answer, basically saying, look, I, I don't think I'm insulting anyone. I'm just standing up to Russia and China who sense weakness from our president. She's exactly right about that. The campaign's wrong that the keyboard warriors at the campaign think a few dark Brandon memes are going to solve their problem. Not going to solve the problem. We all see him for what it is. I just want to quickly underscore the stakes for Biden next Tuesday because we talk a lot about Republicans, but Democrats have a primary of their own, the first votes ever cast in the Democrat primary. Now, the DNC said we're not going to seat delegates from New Hampshire because they want South Carolina to go first. So Biden's chosen not to put his name on the ballot, um, and he's waging a write-in campaign. And the poll we have is from December, St. Anselm, who shows him at 50 percent, Dean Phillips at 10, the self-help guru, Marianne Williamson, I always laugh when I say that, at 7 percent. But my point is this. Lyndon B. Johnson, when he was president, was not on the ballot. He had a write-in campaign. Eugene McCarthy was opposing him. He ended up winning narrowly. John Fund wrote this in the Wall Street Journal. He narrowly won 49 to 42 as the incumbent president. And John Fund says, given the expectations of this time, it was almost as stunning as an outright loss. That's actually what NPR said. So my point is, you could see this guy pulling in 50 percent or not even close to that 49, maybe 48 with a writing campaign. What does that do? Does that energize someone waiting on the sidelines like Michelle Obama? I realize that's like a very out there theory, but if he doesn't do as well as expected, it just puts more pressure on him. Julie, let's talk about that. All right. So New York Post columnist Cindy Adams, she warned in a new piece, don't be shocked if Michelle Obama sneaks her way into the 2024 race. And she goes on to say, coming back now, Obama, not him, her. We've heard this drumbeat for a while. It's getting louder. Plans are to grab Michelle for the Democratic presidency choice, making the music as Barack, the orchestra leader. 
Obama's quietly angling for Joe to go. Is it quiet? He's weaseled up to this for a few weeks. A Joe flop out offers probability that Michelle could wiggle in. Obama's negotiating to make that happen. Pay attention, she writes, to them gurgling and burbling about the election, about concern over Joe's crappy polling, about bad Trump, about everything but bad, bad Leroy Brown. Obama's are not into casual statements. No, they're not. And President Obama wants to get back in the White House. So I guess the only way for him to get back in is to get his wife in there. But that is absolutely <laughs> ludicrous. I mean, that's like, you know, uh, President Kennedy and, and, and Jackie Kennedy going and running for the presidency. That would be like Melania Trump. I am all for women empowerment. Jesus, these are not politicians. These are wives of former presidents. That does not entitle you the White House. But that just goes to show how desperate the Democratic Party is. You think that you married a president, you're married to a president, so therefore that makes you qualified? What in the world would make Michelle Obama qualified to become the president of the United States? She's a smart woman, but that doesn't mean you can lead the country and all of a sudden, first of all, why don't you go, I mean, Hillary was married to a president. She couldn't even get elected. And she actually had a political background and served as a senator and so forth. What does Michelle Obama have exactly? What what? Yeah. Well, does so she have a cookbook? Yeah. I don't know. I, I just I don't know what her well, her other biggest are, problem is. She she hated Washington. She <laughs> talked openly about not being able to wait to get out of the White House. And who can blame her? I mean, it's an with what we've seen, it's been awful. And also, just like with Hillary, Bill Clinton. A mass, he, masterful at retail politics. He liked doing it. He enjoyed it. She was the ideologue. She didn't like people. She didn't like doing it. She just was entitled to it. I think the same situation here. Barack Obama, masterful, enjoyed doing it, but she's not going to be the front person. So, but it's it gets clicks. It gets people, you know, thinking there could be an alternative, and people are desperate. So I think that that's the framework that we're dealing with mm, here. Yeah, I also think. This is just me musing, but you know, Michelle Obama is an accomplished attorney um, and she's liked. She's very well respected and liked. And I think to, to, to me, it indicates what the Democratic Party is, is lacking, not what she lacks, but what they're lacking. Likeability. Which is, uh, yes, and a leader, someone who yep. unifies. So I think they're sort of weighing more heavily that experience in politics. They would rather just have someone that everyone can get behind. But to your point, she's already been in the White House, and she makes a lot of money not having to be in the White House. Yeah. So I, if I were her, I wouldn't be dragged back. Personally. And it's hard to give up vacation in Hawaii in Martha's Vineyard. Yes. Let's just be real. And exactly. she's never suffered real intense scrutiny and that's when you are liked like Bernie yes. Sanders yeah hey everyone I'm Emily Campagno catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR also don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights